Welcome to this tutorial about playbook blocks. A block can be described as a short workflow which encapsulates logical flows. It can be configured once and then inserted into numerous playbooks by simply dragging and dropping them. One advantage is that if you make changes to the block, these changes will be carried through to all instances of this block. The other main advantage is that the blocks enable you to construct shorter and sleeker playbooks. Before you start building your blocks, it's important to take the time to really plan out what types of workflows will work best in this format. I am now going to show you how to create a new block. As in previous releases, you would click here on the plus icon, but choose a block instead. As you can see, we have inputs and an output, with the option of adding actions and flows into the middle steps. The output will usually be inserted into the parent playbook, whereas the beauty of the input parameters is that the values can be configured differently in each place that you insert them into the parent playbook. So for example, let's build now a communication, customer communication block. Let's look at the inputs and we're going to add a fixed parameter called a communication type. And that's going to have two possible values, but the default value we're going to put in here is require approval. We'll have another parameter and we'll call this communication method and we'll put here email. And finally, we'll allow for an additional message, which we'll keep blank for the moment and we'll click save. I'm going to carry on now building this communication method block, um, but I'm going to speed it up. So now, as you can see, we have our fully developed customer communication block. We have two separate branch flows. One is the require approval and the other is the request investigation. And now I'm going to show you how it looks when you put them into a playbook. So we're going to take here a phishing playbook. As you can see, we already have the blocks inside. Here we have a triage block, which I'm not going to go into, but here and here we have the communication block that we built earlier. However, both of them have got different fields, which means that both blocks will go on a different direction. So let's just pretend that we have gone to the blocks and we've located our new block and we've dragged and dropped it into here. And now let's click on it. Okay, so at a glance, you can see we have the inputs here and we have the output. So here, if you remember, it would say require approval. And when I built this playbook, I changed it to say require investigation so that it would go down a different flow. The possible output outputs here are none and investigation completed. And it would return that answer to the phishing playbook. Now, if we go to this one and click on it, you can see we kept the value here, require approval. We've also added an additional message here. Um, the block will go down the flow of the approval and there are two possible return values, approved and not approved. So I've just shown you in this video how to create one block and use it several times in slightly different ways. Now I want to show you a clever little trick. You can actually choose a playbook and duplicate it to be saved as a block. And then the playbook format will be changed into a block format and it's changed as a block and you can carry on building it. Another cool thing that I want to show you is if you go into the cases and I click on an alert with a playbook, we can choose to launch the new block that we created. So here's our block. We can click this, click add, and our new playbook block will run for this case. Thanks for watching this video. For more information, please check out the playbook section in our user guide.